Amen. That was beautiful. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Amen. Hallelujah. The old rugged cross. There's still power in the cross. We're in the right place at the right time. Somebody say amen. amen. Nothing like a Sunday night being close to God. Under the shadow of the Almighty. No matter what's going on in your life tonight, I want you to understand that God knows. And God is ready and prepared to do what he has to do to make you the way he wants you to make you. But it's up to you to give your heart to the Lord tonight. We have one more opportunity to be closer to God tonight. Cling on to the old rugged cross. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Trust God to do what he does best. He makes way where there is no way. The Bible said all things, all things are past and gone. Here they're made new. you new creature in Jesus Christ. You look good. You talk good. You feel good. You walk good. And it's all good. God said when God made man, he, God sat back and said it is very good. We're not just good. We are very good in the eyes of the Lord. That's a lot to think about right there. We're precious to the Lord. We're precious jewel, the Bible says. As in the 13th floor, we're the precious jewel of Jesus Christ. We're that hidden treasure. We're the ones that are going to defeat the world and defeat Satan at, at his own game. Praise God with the power of Jesus Christ. Let's stand for some prayer. We're going to go right to the throne tonight. Put your heart on the throne tonight, Sister Ledger. Take us to the throne, Sister. We bless you, my King. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise the Lord. Tonight we're going to sing, we're going to worship, we're going to break the gates of says in heaven, we're going to knock on that door and bust it open and give, and give God some glory. Amen. Don't be scared. Sing. Sing out of your heart. Sing. Give God the glory tonight. Feel good about it. God wants you to feel good. Amen? All right, let's make a, jo a joyful noise. Good evening. Good evening. Page 596. 596. What a everlasting Lord, what a 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 what a
87, 687. Beautiful, beautiful. Woo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sunday night is awesome. Explosive. Yes. Let's go into our prayer service real quick. Um, any, any prayers or petitions tonight? Can I get one testimony? 
a quick 30 seconds, I love my Lord Jesus Christ, I've done this in my life. Somebody want to shout? Run around? Come on now. I know you want to say something. I love my Lord Jesus. I'm glad to be at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Well, I'm feeling good. Praise the Lord tonight. I'm so grateful I got him in my life. I'm so Hallelujah. grateful the day he reached down and swept me up out of misery and sin. And he's kept me all these years. Yes. And I just praise him and bless him. I'm so grateful for it. Awesome. Hallelujah. One more. One more. Come on now. Brother Dean. I just want to thank the Lord for everything he's done for me. All these years he's watched over me and guided me through the path. Yes. Um, I've stumbled, I've fallen, but I'm here. Yes, sir, we're here. Standing on the promises. He said, be still and know that I'm God. Right there alone is the whole world. Be still. Know that he's God. Seek him. Seek him with a true heart. Be real. Come up to this altar right here. The presence of God is all over this church. Sit in the back. Just come in and seek God. Say, Lord, I want to see you. Father, open my eyes, like Elijah said. Open their eyes. They see that you're greater than the enemy around us. That's the prayer. Lord, let me see that heart. Let me see you, Father. I want to see your mighty hand upon me. I just want to serve you. I just want to thank you. I just want to see who you are. I'm going to chase you and run after you with a true heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Cover me. Put the protection around me. Come on, sister. I want to thank the Lord for everything. Glory. We've been through a lot, sister. A sinner's life. Yes. I'm ready to I use words that I wouldn't ever use again. Amen. Lord. Amen. I want to thank you for everything. Glory. Does it make a difference how big or small? Yes. God is in control. I've been ventilated four times. At one time I couldn't walk. Yes. And I thank the Lord for bringing me through the things that He did. Glory. I still got a lot of things you have to go through. Yes. God is great. Amen. He's full Amen. of love. Just try him. He's there. Just trust him. Step up to faith. That's what I had to do. Yes. It wasn't easy. Right. And it's still not easy. Because I'm probably going to have to have another surgery coming up. But God is good. Yes. And he will never fail you. You yeah. might think he wants to fail you. No, he will not fail you. It's we that fail him. Right. And I just want to thank him and praise him for everything. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. Humbly and broken, we come before the Lord. Brother Doug. On a straight and narrow. Yes. And there ain't no turning back. No True. turning back. True. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. I remember when I got here, sister was in a wheelchair. They sat over here on this side of the, of the church. And that Sunday, Brother Ledger got up and he was perky. I said, something's going to happen here. I could feel it. I was sitting way back there. And he grabbed that all and said, all the sisters get over and started praying for everybody. All the sisters here, some were sick. Everybody got healed that day. The following week, the sisters started walking in the house of God. That's a true story, man. If he did it for her, he'd do it for us. Whatever you're going through, it has no breach on God. We cross barriers with the power of the blood. Let God work in you. Be still. Talk to him. If we're rushing around and putting music on and jumping up and down, we miss the thoughts, of the, the small details of the Lord. He just wants you to sit by that pitting table back there all day. Yeah. Let that cool breeze hit you. Let that sunshine come upon you. Just be still. Feel good about yourself. And feel good that you're walking with God. We're not doing what we used to do no more. We don't want to. I know we don't want to. How many want to go back? I didn't think so, neither do I. Ooh, it's frightening to think about that. After I've come so long to feel the presence of God and the glory, after I've been blessed and got healed, woo, not me, I'm going all the way. I want to go to heaven. The promise is that in victory in Jesus, he says that we're going to have a song to sing and stay with, with the angels. I want to be on the choir. If there's applications for heaven. Who wants some applications? We got somebody here. Nobody? I got one guy, all right. Got two, three. Four, sounds good. We got to get to heaven. That's the goal. And we serve God with a true heart. Amen? Amen. Let's, get up, um, let's get up and pray. <laughs> um, prayers, I mean, petitions for prayer? Let's get up and pray. We got, we got, we got this. Come on, let's pray. let's pray. Let's pray. We got this. Hallelujah. God is moving tonight. I want you guys to hear the word tonight. Father, we thank you again, my Lord. We raise our hands right now, Father, chasing after you with a true heart tonight, my Lord. 
You know each and every thought from afar, my king. I pray a blessing upon each and every person in this house tonight, Lord. We've come here to gather, Father, to give you the glory. Let the praise and worship be pleasing unto your presence, my God. Let our prayers, Father God, come before the throne of God tonight, Father God, sweet smelling Savior. Holy Spirit, intercede for us in prayer like you know how to do best, my Lord. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we exalt you, Father. We pray for all that are outside these gates, Father. We pray for America. We pray for all of the, the, the politicians, Father. Let their hearts be right towards you, my God. We pray for this country, all the countries around us, and we pray for our enemies that don't know you, my King, that your mighty hand would stop them at in a second, Father. Let, let them come back, Father, and rekindle their hearts before you, my Lord. We just thank you so much for what we have here today. We thank you for all the supporters of the churches around us who support the Four Miles Rescue Mission. I want to thank you most for all of our ministers here. These men of God, these sisters who stand in the gap, Father, who stand in the trenches, Lord, in the midst of the storm of a hurricane, they still raise your name on high because they've seen you, they've known you, they tasted the goodness of God. And that testimony falls upon us who are searching for you, who are seeking your presence, my God. And these men have been great in our eyes. And I want to thank them and thank you, God, for putting them in our lives, Lord. And put a hedge of protection around them and a blessing, Father, and wisdom to keep pushing forward. As more come in, more get blessed in the name of Jesus, Almighty God. We want to do your will, Father. Only your will, my God. Help us to do your will, my King. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Sister, take us to the throne one more time. Oh, my bad. <clears throat> my, my ushers. Sorry about that. Amanita Pacheco, mente. Okay, it's been a beautiful day with the Lord. Suma, Pray. Father, yes. Jesus. 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 Amén. Amén. awesome. Praise God. I want to thank you for giving to the Four Myers Rescue Mission. Thank you for loving God. Thank you for loving each other. And thank you for loving God hard. Give God all you got, okay? Let's sing some more. Sister, make a joyful noise.
Page 492. 492. Yes. Absolutely. Not only did I hear the right things, I've seen these people and I testified to that. Yes. Living out that made me know it can be done by anyone. And then Carl Thompson, bless his heart, being an artist, he had me paint. It's not found in the Bible, but it sings out tongues. He had me paint. What you do speak so loud. I hear not a word you say. Yes. Mm. That's stuck in my eye. That's my heart. powerful. And I talked to him about it, and I heard what he said Amen. about it. Praise God for that. Amen. Praise that God. Let me yes. come back. Thank you, brother, yeah. for that. That was powerful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother, Dave. Let's, um, let's hear the word tonight from our man of God tonight. Let's put our ears, our minds together, put our hearts in God's hands. We're secure there. 
Amen? Amen. Sir? It is said that one day John Wesley was walking down the street with another Christian brother, and a drunk staggered by them. And the Christian brother said, Isn't that pitiful, Mr. Wesley? And Mr. Wesley said, But for the grace of God, there go I. All in all I ever find thee. He is wonderful. Well, let's continue following Abraham tonight. Genesis tonight, chapter 23. Chapter 23 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 23. Again, in reading at verse number one, thank you for standing in reverence to God's Word this evening. And by the way, if you need a large print Bible, my wife and I have some, we'd like to give you one. Let us know. Genesis chapter 23, and Sarah was a hundred and seven and twenty years old. And these were the years of the life of Sarah. Sarah died in Karjalaba, and the name is Hebron, the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham, Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Leth, saying, I'm a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Father, thank you again for your word this evening. Would you please help us to preach and speak? Would you please help our hearers to hear spiritual truth? Lord, we need thee. We thank you for the word, but we need your blessed spirit to anoint the word. Help us tonight, and for all you do, we'll thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> Excuse me. A month ago, when uh, Reverend Wooten gave us these assignments, I was thinking about some of the wonderful topics that could be preached from the life of Abraham. I thought about Abraham's journey, and I thought about Abraham's temptation. I thought about Abraham's faith, and I thought about Abraham's God. And so I was kind of prepared to go in one of those directions this evening, and the Lord said, I have something else in mind. <laughs> and so this evening we're going to follow Abraham in his business dealings. Abraham is a stranger, a pilgrim, and he owns no property in the land of Canaan. His wife Sarah has passed away to her eternal reward, and now he needs a gravesite to bury her. He approaches the sons of Leith, who own the land, and buys a cave of one of them for 400 or 200 shekels of silver, I don't remember. The sale is witnessed before the gate of the city. The deed is transferred to Abraham. And today, if you travel to the Holy Land, you can actually visit the cave in Hebron, a city just a few miles south of Jerusalem. Abraham paid the asking price. Abraham paid the asking price in full, and the land became his. This man had been promised by God 
that he would be the owner of all the land of Canaan. But the only part of Canaan he ever owned was this cave. And the field in front of it and the trees around it. It became the resting place of not only his wife, but some years later, his two sons, Ishmael and Isaac, buried him there. Abraham was honest with others in his business dealings. Like Samuel, he could say, do any of you have a charge against me? Have I taken anything from you by fraud? Speak up now and I'll make it right, right now. Christians, especially Christian leaders, who sometimes seem to be so spiritual, but run out on their bills, bring a reproach upon Christ. How is your track record concerning this this evening? Are you honest in all your business affairs? Now, Abraham had a steward. It was the steward of his house. He was the chief steward. He was in, had at his disposal everything that Abraham owned. Amen. And one day, Abraham gave this steward an assignment. He said, I want you to go to a distant land and I want you to speak to my brother in his home and offer him a dowry for one of his daughters that she may be the wife of my son Isaac. Now the steward realized that the riches he carried were not his. Abraham and his steward had an understanding about money that many Christians don't seem to know anything about. Abraham realized that even he was a steward of all the Lord had placed in his care. Amen. Just as the steward would give an account of his expenses to Abraham, so Abraham must also give an accounting to God. Christians are not owners, but stewards. We too, as we follow Abraham, will one day give an accounting how we handled the resources that the Lord has entrusted to us. Well, before I became a Christian believer, I spent a lot of dough in riotous living. Like the prodigal son in the story Jesus told, remember he got his inheritance from his dad and he went out and partied the whole thing away. But after I became a believer, the Lord started talking to me about making restitutions. Now I didn't hear anything about that till I got to the rescue mission. But even before God got me to the mission, he was already talking to me about making some restitutions, particularly the back support I owed on my son. Now, often a court of law will demand as part of a sentence that restitution be made to a victim or their family. Many new believers head back to Egypt, spiritually speaking. Because there's a restitution in their life they don't want to make. God has talked to them about something, and they've either said no outright, or they've kind of stuffed it into the background and tried to obey God in all kinds of other areas. Paying back money that was stolen or defrauded from someone? Perhaps even time to serve for unconfessed crimes. You know, I remember the day when all the restitution seemed to be made. 
This will build your strength tremendously in your Christian walk. If you will obey God and write that letter or send that money or take care of that problem that he's been talking to you about. I know people right here in this congregation that have been resisting the impulse from God to make a restitution for more than 30 years. Now, after your restitutions are paid and your old account books are corrected, you can begin li living the life of a Christian steward. I remember one fellow, he came to the mission, he got saved real good, and he came and talked to me. He said, uh, he said I want you to pray for me. I've got a, a problem to deal with. I said, oh, what's that? He said, well, I've been backslid for more than three years, and I believe God wants me to pay all my back ties. Yes, <laughs> I've never heard that before. I, I kind of figured, you know, if a, if a fella got right with God, that the Lord would just kind of forgive him for all that stuff. So I questioned this young man a little bit. I said, that's rather unusual that God would ask you to pay your back tithes. He said, well, he said, the problem was, is that's what I backslid over. God wanted me to start paying my tithes, and I kept hedging on him and just doing a little and not following through. And the next thing I knew, I lost out. And I was back in the old sinful life again. And now God wants me to make it up. I said, well, get started. Amen. Get you a job and get to work and start making some money and start double tithing. You'll catch up pretty soon. Tithe your 10% now and tithe the back 10%. Somebody said that uh, Jesus talked more about hell than any other subject. I found out that wasn't true. He did talk about hell quite a bit. He also talked about heaven. The thing he talked about most, if you're interested, is he talked about the Heavenly Father. That's the most thing he talked about. But he kept bringing up over and over again different illustrations and stories and parables about money about stewardship, about people who were good stewards and people who were bad stewards and what happened to them. I wonder if that's because he knows that's where a lot of people live, right where their wallet is. We all shall give an accounting one day how we spent the resources God has entrusted to us. Oftentimes when somebody says, what's your name? I say Ledger. Ledger? Yeah, Ledger. Just like the book. You know, we're all going to give an accounting someday. Money placed in our care. Time given to us to use for God's glory. Well, Lord, I don't have much time left. Well, we better start using it for God's glory. How about this one? The influence granted to us that influences the lives of other people around us. Amen. What are they seeing? What is our family, our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our acquaintance at the mission seeing in us? that's leading them either towards God or away from Him. One poet said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. One day Jesus made a profound statement that I think a lot of people pass over Jesus said, where your treasure is, <laughs> there will your heart be also. 
This truth is as sure as gravity. <laughs> oh, how I love Jesus. But I call the shots when it comes to my do re mi. Some Christians don't even pay their tithes, yet alone their offerings. All to Jesus I surrender. Except my money, of course. How about, take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. You liar. Sing that song and hold back on God. You know, the Jews are required to pay tithes and make offerings, but it's different for the Christians. This might come to surprise to some of you. Christ does not want 10%. He wants it all. It all belongs to him. And it's in our charge. Did you know Abraham paid his tithes? He sure did. Let's read about it. We can look at it there in Genesis chapter 14. In Genesis 14, 18, it says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he, that is Abram, gave him tithes of all he had. Now, many Bible commentators believe that King Melchizedek was actually Jesus making an appearance on earth before he was incarnated in Bethlehem. Now, I'll tell you why they think that. Because the Hebrew writer mentioned it over in chapter 6. In Hebrews chapter 6 and 7, the writer talks about this fella, Melchizedek. The writer says in verse number 20 of chapter 6 that Jesus is made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abram gave a tenth part of all, being first by interpretation the king of righteousness, and after that also the king of Salem, which is king of peace without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of his spoils. You know, we might be a little puzzled about Melchizedek, but there's no doubt who Jesus is. Amen. To sum it up, a follower of Abraham will be true and honest in all his business dealings. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ expects his children to be as honest and as upright as he is. Well, Lord, I'll get honest when I get to heaven. A lot of people believe that. The problem is that all liars go to hell, not heaven. David, would you come back to the piano, please, and play 486? Let's all stand together. Four eighty six.
Let's just listen to the piano. Just play quietly. Perhaps, perhaps you need to make some straightening out in your life. Perhaps you've wasted some time. Perhaps you need to pray and confess that you have been wasteful, prodigal. This altar is open tonight. We want you to know that Jesus still is calling you. He hasn't given up on you. You can still answer his call, if you will. Somebody told me they'd just been through a 12-step program and they wanted to know how many steps was in our program. I said one. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only one that works. How about you? Do you need to pray tonight? Place here to pray. We'll be glad to have prayer with you. Father in heaven, we do thank you for your sweet visitation here tonight and ask you please go with us. Don't let any of us escape your loving, wondrous eye. Keep thy hand upon us, Lord. Call us with that holy calling under that life that Abraham lived that we may also please thee. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.